Stevie Pass, Jackson, Bahrain One Racing, Norwalk Recap, Screwblower Division. questions and excitement about uh, the performance that we just had at NHRA Pro Modified Norwalk. How, what happened came to happen, uh, what happened as well as some of the highs and lows of that event. So I'll take you through a, a brief synopsis of kind of where we ended up and how it happened and what we what we ended up doing. For the last two years the roost bar combination has been at a pretty large disadvantage uh, aside from a few Hail Mary runs that happen every six months. Um, the powers that be have just refused to allow it to be competitive. Um, and we've been beating our head against the wall and beating our head against the wall. And finally, I'm just tired of, uh, of doing it. So with this year being the first year that the screw charger, which I call the screw blower, the he rotor, and the who charger uh, being legal, I noticed that at the first few races, it ran pretty well, but it didn't run nearly as well as I thought it should. Uh, and what I was fearing is that we were gonna have another pro uh, charger sandbag two-year domination fiesta going on. So uh, we discussed it a little bit internally in the team and decided to just bolt a who charger on a wore out motor we had that we used for our, for our testing or testing torque conversion stuff and go out there and see what it run. So we bolt this deal on, we take it to our home track, the House of Hook, Jackson, South Carolina. 4,200 feet of air, it's 100 degrees outside. Uh, we poke her down through there and run in the mid 380s to the eighth of a mile, which is pretty competitive, far better than what a, what a Roots Charger is capable of. So kind of right away, I knew that there was some, some pretty big advantage. Um, so we decided to bring this thing out to Norwalk, run it one time, and just see where it stacked up against some of the other screw cars in the class, uh, as well as to try to give our team a, a shot in the arm. We haven't been running very well team-wide, uh, some of it bad luck, some of it uh, new car, blues, some of it uh, just flat getting outrun. It's really difficult. Uh, NHRA Pro Modified is really the cream of the crop when it comes to racers and tuners. Um, you, you think you're a hero everywhere else and you come over here and realize kind of where you're at. So we took it, tested it at Dragway 42 uh, before Norwalk. Again, very miserable conditions, hot and nasty. Ended up running uh, 380 uh, today, 380 with an eight. Shut it off 1,000 foot, went at 578 at 220. This thing's gonna be pretty fast. Like if it'll go down the track, it will. Uh, it'll it'll make some of the other teams out there have to run their stuff hard. So we go up for Q1. Uh, I'm too aggressive. I, I want to go out there and just uh, lay my 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 performance on the track. Does that does that say? Yep, I think it does. <laughs> <laughs> and it comes loose in the middle. I pedal it. Never know what weather's gonna do this time of year. Maybe the only qualifying session and run a 597 at 251 miles an hour. Stevie pedaled the car, Stan Shelton noses out in front, runs 585. Uh, my jaw hit the ground when I saw that speed. That's the first time we've run it to the finish line. And uh, I told the guys, I was like, if this thing will just go on a racetrack, it's gonna be pretty fast. Uh, motor looks good. NHRA's got their eye, both their eyeballs and their binoculars out looking at our team. Q2, we go up there, uh, and I told Cord on the starting line, I told Drew, Robbie, all the guys that are there, uh, this thing's gonna be pretty special. So a couple cars in front of us ran exceptional. Um, Janice goes out there and runs well. Um, we are, uh, we're, we're paired up, uh, Jason Scruggs ran well. We're paired up with Stan Shelton, uh, which is another screwblower car, the leading screwblower car in the class uh, as of now. We rip it down through there and go 570 at 257 miles an hour ever so gently going in. Oh! 
Thought for a minute there, Shelton was going to get really close to that center line. And uh, Shelton, or excuse me, Stevie Fast goes to number one, a 5.70 with a 1, 257.63 miles an hour. While uh, it's a really good feeling when NHRA tech department is sitting on the top end when you're getting out of the car and uh, there's two scooters there and they follow you back to your pits uh, to make sure you don't touch the car uh, before they take it apart to make sure it's legal. I never frown upon that. I, I love it when they are inspecting our cars. Uh, it means you're running well, and it means that everybody knows that uh, in the class that, that you're playing by the rules. Um, we go out there, Q3, hotter session, uh, go 74. I think we're low ET of the round again. Uh, E1, um, go out there, it knocks a blower belt off of it at 1,000 foot, go 79. Um, decent run. Uh, until the engine quit running at 2.52. Doug Winters leaves first. Doug Winters giving it a ride, but oh, look at Stevie Fast Jackson. Smoke out of the back of Stevie's car. 5.79-7 at 2.52.43. And the Bahrain One Racing Team is going to the next round. E2 the next morning, uh, they moved our E1 up because of threat of rain. E2 the next morning, we go out running Eric Latino. I respect those guys a lot. They're home run ball hitters. Eric Latino took me out of competition at my first NHRA race ever in Gainesville in 2017. I was qualified number one. He was qualified number 16. The transmission breaks in the burnout and uh, he takes me out. So I told him in stage lanes, I said, all right, Magnum, call him Magnum. I said, all right, Magnum, uh, payback is here. Like I'm about to lay it on you. So uh, that was a good, uh, a good run. Ended up going 575, 254. Wetter conditions uh, on race day, hotter. Stevie Summit side. Oh, Stevie Fast. Got all over him on the starting line. Stevie Fast. 575 for the win. Uh, and we're going up in the semis against uh, Ricky Smith. Now, if anybody can say anything about Ricky, he's a great racer. He's unbeatable on Sunday. He makes good decisions. And he's got a rabbit foot the size of Texas. In the burnout, the car pops the airline off the transmission. It breaks the airline fitting on the Lenko. Well, we back up. I'm trying to tell Cord possibly something we can do to the airline. Uh, it looks like the procedure of backing up took a long time because I had to reach over and shut the air bottle off, get the thing in reverse because it was going to exhaust all the air, back up, turn the air bottle on, pull it forward, turn the air bottle off. He messes with it for a little bit. NHRA grabs a hold of him and says, send the car. We take off, run the car through low gear, goes a 9.57 down low, it's on a pretty good run, and then of course there's no second and third gear. Car goes to the high side ship, and we uh, we lose the round. When the starter's telling everybody now, get away from the car, and I don't know, they do not look very confident. And they were not very confident. We moved from, I think, 10th or 11th to third in points, uh, which, is a, which is a really good move for our team. Um, and we learned a lot about our combination. Charlotte, she's a she's a really good proven car. When you get into a piece of pipe that just works, it makes it easy. Um, so definite rule changes on the horizon. Uh, they're going to smack the screw blower. Uh, hopefully, they'll help out the roots. Uh, we're supposed to maybe see that this week or next. A lot of you guys are asking which car I'm bringing to Topeka. Um, it depends on what happens with the rules. If I think that this is competitive, I'm going to bring this. I think the roots charger is competitive. I want to bring that. Ideally. I want every combination to be able to win on Sunday. And I think if we have parity like that, we had a full field in Norwalk. Interest is coming back to the class as we get parity in. Parity, parity, parity is key uh, to keeping car count up and to keeping it exciting on Sunday. I would like to see it where the driver determines the race uh, every, every round of racing. And as we get the NHRA Tech Department's hearts in the right spot, um, I show them all of my data. Uh, I'm an open book. I told them what I think it would take to slow this thing down, and we'll see. Uh, they're gonna, they're gonna, they're gonna hit us pretty good, and, and we'll, we'll see. It is what it is. Uh, you're, we, you take the tools that you're given uh, and try to do the best with it you can to win. Uh, thank you guys. We had a lot of fans come out to Norwalk. Uh, it was great hanging out with you guys. It was good to see our team running uh, back on top again, qualified number one by a decent margin. I feel like we had the car to beat to win the race. Um, <laughs> Gremlins. It takes a lot of pieces to make this thing work. Something as simple as a $1.99 cent airline fitting can completely take you out of competition. So we're gonna plumb the whole system out of galvanized pipe uh, like your air compressors in your shop. 
The car's got to weigh so much anyway, probably going to be heavier. Uh, hopefully we can stop that from happening again. Look forward to seeing you guys in Topeka. we got a few weeks off. Uh, we're going to dive into Project Ronnie during this uh, time off that we have and uh, get working on some more of that. I know you guys are asking a lot about that project. It's starting to get to the fun side of it, so I'm excited about it. Thank you guys for watching. We'll talk to you soon.